Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled Blind Date, a story of Willie and Bert in Paris and how they become involved in a little romance, some high finance, and a little of skullduggery. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, but first... Today, you young men of America have an excellent opportunity to learn a trade that will assure your future. Under the Reserve for You training program, your army is training high school graduates in such interesting fields as radio, radar, electronics, guided missiles, well, that's just to name a few... Actually, there are over 100 courses to choose from. And you can make your own choice and receive a letter of acceptance which guarantees you a seat in your choice before you enlist. You can become a qualified technician, trained to do an important job and do it right. So for full information about an exciting career, you visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Ask all about the Reserve for You training program. Remember... There is no obligation. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, Blind Date. I am the unluckiest guy in the whole United States Army. Yes, sir, that's me. I am not the smartest or the dumbest. I am not the best looking. No, 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 I'm not. But like I'm telling you, I am the unluckiest, and that's a fact. To give you a slight idea what I'm talking about, take that deal I got lost up in when I was in Paris. Paris, France, that is. Ooh, what a beating. The way it happened, I was making a little time with this classy little chick, Michelle. She worked in a perfume shop on the Rue de la Guerre. Be with you in one moment, monsieur. Just one moment. Take your time, honey. Now then, monsieur, what can I do for you to do? Willie! Oh, Willie, it is you. In the flesh, baby. Oh, Willie, I'm so happy to see you. Why didn't you tell me what I passed today? I would have asked Madame Boucher to give me afternoon off. Oh, you should have told me. Well, I don't have a pass, sweetie. I just came in to pick up something for the colonel. I got to get right back to camp. That's too bad. And I thought you come to see Michelle. Oh, that's all I ever come in for, sweetie. Believe oh. me. <laughs> you naughty boy. You say that to all the girls I know. You wound me when you say things like that, Michelle. Right here, deep down. Oh, Willie. I was only fooling. You're such a silly boy. There are certain things I don't fool about, sweetie. And you are one of them. <laughs> well, I got to be getting back now. I'm so sorry, Willie. I'll be back Saturday. That's only two days. We got a date for Saturday night, remember? Oh, Saturday. Of course. I've been looking forward to it. I've been you dressed. I'll and... pick you up at eight, sweetie. I got some mighty oh. big plans. Now, you wait and see. Willie, ma foi, I forgot. What's the matter? I cannot go. What do you mean you can't go? You've got another date. Who's a wise apple that's trying to cut in on me? I'll pulverize no, 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 no. It's nothing like that. It is my cousin, Georgette. She's coming from Lyon to spend the weekend with me. I cannot leave her alone. Oh, Willie, I'm so very sorry. It is all my fault. Now, wait a minute. I got an idea. What is that? How's about I wrestle up a friend of mine and we make it a foursome? What do you think of that? Oh, Willie, you're wonderful. Oh, how smart you are. Ah, uh, think nothing of it, sweetie. Now, let me see who I'm going to bring. Uh, Harry? Uh, he's a crumb. Charlie? Bite. Bite, bite. That's who I'll take good old bite. Uh, tell me, sweetie, what kind of girl is this Georgette? Georgette? Oh, she's very sweet, my cousin. Les petite mignonne charmante. Oh, Willie, you will like her. And she's very smart. Oh, 
Oh, you will like her very much. Okay, it's set at 8 o'clock Saturday night. Good, we will be ready. I got to shelf off now. I told the first sergeant I'd be oh. back by 5 o'clock. So long, sweetie. Goodbye, Willie. <laughs> I ain't going. You don't want to go, but don't go. But you got to have a reason. All I want for you to do is to tell me why, that's all. Go ahead, talk yourself blue in the face. I still ain't going. Give me one good reason. I don't want any part of your blind date. So what's that, is a court-martial offense? And after all I done for you. What'd you ever do for me? Lots of things. Name one. Well, like that, that cold detail, I get you off of that, yes or no? Oh, yeah, you got me off of that. Okay. The first sergeant was waiting for me with open arms. How about that? Then he stuck me on KP for a whole week. That's what you did for me, buddy. Well, there wasn't anything wrong with the plan, Bert. You gotta admit that. Just that when you're dealing with an abnormal mind like Sergeant Mullaney's, anything is liable to happen. Who can figure it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really not blaming you, Willie. The only thing is, every time you get an idea, it turns sour. So just... Give me the 2,000 francs you owe me, and I'll, I'll take care of myself this weekend. All right, Bert. That's the way you feel about it? That's the way I feel. Now, let's have the 2,000. We'll be the same old pals as always, huh? Yeah, 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 the 2,000. Now, Bert, uh, I wanted to talk to you about that. Uh... Oh. You ain't got my 2,000. Oh, well, Bert, I didn't say that exactly. You'll get your money. Yeah, it's just that I can't lay my hands on it at the moment. I tell you what I'm going to do. Stop snowing me, Willie. You ain't got my two thousand, and you know it. And that—that's why you give me the big pitch about the date, too, huh? Oh, it ain't that, Bert. I want you to come along because I know you'll have a good time. Believe me. Either I go with you, or since I'm dead broke, I don't go any place. That's—that's that's the deal, huh? Oh, I wouldn't put it that way. <clears throat> okay, I, I give up. I'll—I'll I'll go. Ah, you're talking. Now, look, I'll meet you in front of Michelle's house at a quarter to eight. Here's the address, 26 Rue Racine. Now, don't be late. Where are you going? I'm going to stop at special services. i got to get some tickets from Brannigan for that show they're putting on tonight. I'll see you later, Bert. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you, Willie, but I'm warning you. If I get stuck this time again, if this deal goes sour, I'm going to tear you limb from limb. You hear that? Limb from limb. <laughs> There, you can see the kind of people I am forced to associate with. I mean, you ever hear of anything like that in all your life? I'm doing the guy a big favor, and he shows his gratitude by throwing rocks at me. If I had any brains, I'd have spit in his eye right then and there. Limb from limb, he's going to tear me. The knife of that guy. And what are you going to do? Oh, hello, Willie. What's a good word? Brannigan, my old pal. I ain't seen you in a dog's age. How you been? Not bad, not bad. What can I do for you, Willie? Nothing much. I just thought I'd drop in and shoot the breeze a while. I haven't seen you in such a long time. I said to myself, I think I'll drop in on my old buddy Brannigan and see how he's making out. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, Willie, let's have it. What do you want? Now, what kind of way is that to talk? I'm telling you, I was passing this way. And Willie, I... Willie. Well, as a matter of fact, there is something I wanted to see you about. That show you're running down at the Odeon Theater in Paris tonight, I want four tickets. Sure, sure. A 800 francs. 800? That's it. 200 francs a piece. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Brannigan and I, you happen to be a little short right now. Suppose you put them on a cuff, huh? Not a chance, Willie. Brannigan, I'm surprised at you. You mean you won't trust me for a lousy 800 francs? I wouldn't trust you for eight francs. Wait a second, Brannigan. You can't talk to me like that. I'm no deadbeat. I don't owe you a single franc. No, sir. Not a single franc. Now, don't get franc. excited, Willie. I didn't say you did. Well, what an attitude, Jim. Not a single franc. But how about the 32 bucks I lent you at Fort Benny? All right. Then there was 14 pounds in Nottingham and the 12,000 lira in Naples. No francs, of course, but what about... All right, all right, all right, I said. All I did was ask you for four lousy tickets. You'll give me a lesson in ancient history. I just thought I'd remind you, that's all. Thanks. Uh, Brannigan. Yeah, Willie? Brannigan, buddy, I wouldn't ask you if it wasn't important... How about What do you mean, important? This is a question of eating? No, well, my girl's cousin's coming in from out of town, and I promised we'd take her. Oh. Uh, pretty nice number, huh? What do you mean, nice? She's terrific. Uh, you see that, Willie? The only time I see you is when you want something. 
Why don't you count me in on one of these deals once in a while? You? Sure, sure, me. I'm human, you know. I'd like to go out with a nice, intelligent girl once in a while, too. I didn't know you was interested. And, 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 and I ain't no dope, either. I do a lot of reading. I'm the kind of a person who can talk on practically any subject. Now he tells me. I'd rather have an intelligent guy like you than that baboon bite, but I just got through talking him into the deal. Well, you figure out how to count me in, and you can have the tickets. Now, let me think a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I know how we can rub that ignoramus out of the picture. Now, wait a minute. Is it ethical? Certainly. This guy's out of his class anyway. It'll be a favor to him. Now, here's what I want you to do. You come to Michelle's apartment, 26, Rue Racine, at 10 after 8, and tell Bert that Sergeant Mullaney is looking for him because his orders have come in for him to go to that rest camp on the Riviera. Uh -huh. He's been trying to work that deal. And when he hears that, he'll hightail it back to the base so fast it'll blow your hat off. You think it'll work? It's a cinch. Now, right, give me the tickets. I'll bring them with me. Ooh, you've got such a suspicious nature. <laughs> Hey, what, what floor are they on? Six. Six? We can fly and pay for this? Save your breath. Uh, here we are. What are you doing with that handkerchief? My nose is bleeding. Never could take the altitude. Oh, all right, wise guy. Knock it off. Well. I'm fine and dandy, sweetie. I'm... Oh, Michelle, I want you to meet my friend, Bert. Bert Michelle. Oh, I'm very happy to make your acquaintance. Oh, I'm very happy to meet you. Oh, really? <laughs> it's so cute, your friend. <laughs> now sit down, sit down. I will call Georgette. Eh? Georgette! Tu viens, Georgette? The bus... Oh, that girl. I'll go and get her. Now, you make yourself comfortable, and I will be right back. Yeah. Hey, Willie, what a tomato. Maybe maybe I'm going to have to apologize to you after all. Actually, <laughs> thing is, you've got to learn to trust me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I know. I, I happen I... to be a very you honest fellow. Right, uh, this is um, Willie and his friend Bert. Uh, how do you do? Place to meet you, I'm sure. Oh, uh, likewise. Ah, the first thing we're going to do. Willie. Later, Bert. I want Now, Willie, I want to talk to you right now. Private. Sure, buddy. Anything you say. You boys would like something to drink, eh? Uh, some cognac? Yes, indeed. Good. I will help you, Michel. Wait for me. Okay, buddy boy, what's on your mind? Willie. Willie, I warned you. I... I... I could tell by his voice he was going to give me a hard time. I mean, that's bite. Always griping, always complaining. Well, what are you going to do? Like I told you before, a low element. Figures. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Blind Date. We will return in just one moment for the second act. With men who know the Army, it's the job you do that counts. Now you take the yard brakeman, the dental technician, or the weather observer. <laughs> they're all soldiers like me, and they're all doing a real grand job of making the United States Army the world's best. Now why don't you make use of your skills in the United States Army? There's a job for every specialist and technician in the Army. And there's a need for his special skills. And a satisfying career for you with those special skills. Tell you what, you'll visit your local United States Army recruiting station real soon. Learn all about the benefits you can have when you enlist in the United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Blind Date. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was so disgusted with that bum bite, if I had the dough I owed him, I'd have paid him off and thrown him out. I mean, I don't mind a guy being ugly, but that bite, one look at that kisser of his, and I get so nauseous. Well, I mean, there's got to be a limit. You did it again, Willie. I should have known better than to trust you. What a snake. Whoa, 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 hold on. What kind of talk is this, snake? You got something on that alleged mind of yours? Spit it out. Well, watch the language. 
You're pushing me a little too far. That dame. She is the ugliest dame in the Republic of France, and I'll lay you five to one odd, son. Chase, not so ugly. Not so ugly. No, well, anyway, you mustn't judge a book by its cover. Georgette may be a wonderful girl deep down inside. For my money, she is just plain ugly. All I want is a regulation-sized dame with standard equipment. I said, ask you too much. Is that asking? Shh. They're coming. Yeah, they're coming. All right, Michel. <laughs> Hey, this is all right. And you, Corporal Albert, you like it? Yeah, wonderful. I may say I do not care for the hard liquor. I find it dulls the sensibilities and makes it difficult to understand and appreciate the deeper meanings of art and nature. Of course. I like to be in complete possession of my faculties at all times. Georgette is such a practical girl. This is getting to be too much for me. In addition to everything else, she's got a brain, and you know how I feel about dames with brains. Knock it off, will you? Ooh, what do you boys whisper about? Uh, Bert was just saying how intelligent your cousin Georgette is. What? Oh, you have not heard anything yet. Georgette, oh, Georgette, oui. tell them your ideas on, um, comment dit-on, existentialism. You know she has studied philosophy at the Sorbonne? Uh, that doesn't... Nah, oh, doesn't. Michel, they are not interested in that. But of course we are. What do you take us for anyway, a couple of peasants? You out of your mind. Well, <laughs> what I like about existentialism is the individualistic approach it advocates in uh, evaluating reality. Oh. Uh, that is to say, reality is only the awareness existing in the individual mind. You see, Jean-Paul Sartre has said, that the consciousness does not come automatically. It is really a free choice made by the individual. Oh. You agree, Corporal Bert? Huh? Oh, I certainly. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I keep telling Willie. Ain't that right, Willie? Uh, I'll get it. Now, you stay where you are. I'll take oh, it. Oh, Bert, you finish what you were saying to George Edits. No. I'm finished. <laughs> beat you. I beat you. See what it is. Brannick. Hi. Brannigan, buddy, am I glad to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in, buddy boy. Step right in. You'll make yourself at home here. Uh, look, uh, I've been looking all over for you, but Sergeant Mullaney... Oh, never mind, Sergeant Mullaney. I, I got something important I want to talk to you about. Oh, yeah? Hey, what do you think about that, Willie? It's Brannigan. Hiya, Brannigan. Oh, hello, Willie. Uh, uh, Bert, your, your orders. Uh, the orders from uh, the, the rest camp, they... Uh, what I mean to say... You know, you know, I always liked you, Brannigan. You, you know that, don't you? Well, yeah, I guess so. You guess so? <laughs> you hear that, Willie? He guesses so. <laughs> well, it so happens, little buddy, that I am in a position to prove it. Now, now, now here's the deal. A uh, friend of mine, sweetie, we'll be right in. We're breaking in, Jerry. Okay, come on up. Let's go. Uh, you, you, you go on in, Willie. I want to talk to my old pal Brannigan for a minute. Yeah, but... Shove off, Willie. This is a private deal. All right, but make it snappy. we got to leave soon. Now then... Little buddy, listen carefully. Uh, the first sergeant, Sergeant Mullaney. As you can no doubt see for yourself, Willie and me have a date going here tonight with two charming young ladies. Yeah, yeah. There's no no argument on that point, right? If you say so. Right. Now, what I'm going to tell you is is it's going to kind of surprise the pants off your buddy boy, so you get a good grip on yourself, eh? Oh, yeah? <laughs> All right, let's uh, have it. Okay, now, you, you're listening, huh? I am going to step out of the picture... I'm going to tell the ladies that I have to go back to the base on important business and that yours truly is going to take my place. Now, huh? <laughs> what do you think of that, huh? Well, wait, well, wait a minute. I don't get no, it. Don't don't I... thank me. Don't thank me. No, it's, it's a big sacrifice, I know. But like I said before, when it comes to my buddy Brannigan, nothing is too good. <laughs> Nothing's too good? Yeah. Uh, something fishy about this. I think I'll be good. No, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean, fishy? Can't a guy do you a favor without you getting suspicious? The way people act these days. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised at your attitude. You're too right. anxious. Something's got to be wrong. I'm going to try a little experiment with you, buddy boy. I, I, I want to see something. Yeah? In addition to the charming company of this lovely, intelligent young lady, I will offer you, out of my own pocket, that is, 1,000 francs. That. What do you think of that? Well, why should you give me a 1,000? 2,000. I don't get it, Bert. What do 3, you... 3,000, and that's my last word, you crummy little pirate. All right, Bert, if you insist. It's a deal. I'll give you the 3,000 payday. What a beating this turned out to be. Hey, what gives with you guys? You gonna spend the evening out here in the hall? Georgette's asking for you, Bert. She wants to continue that discussion you were having on... <laughs> Get a load of this, Brannigan. 
Existentialism. I'm getting out of here. Brannigan and me worked out a deal here. You leaving? Oh, isn't that too bad. Did you say existentialism? Yeah. Well, that happens to be one of my favorite subjects. Huh? I think I'll go in and see what the young lady has to say on uh, the metaphysical approach to reality. Yeah, you do that little thing. I'm right behind you. All right, wise guy, I'm leaving. But I'll get even with you. Remember what I'm telling you? I'll get even with you if it's the last thing I ever do, Willie. Such bitterness. Now, I want you to go in there like a little gentleman and say goodbye to the ladies. Now, go on now. Boy, what a bum. How did I ever get mixed up with such a miserable bum? And right about here is where I made the big mistake. What happened was I got kind of overconfident. Everything was going along so smooth. Bert was leaving. You can understand how happy I was to get rid of that guy. Brannigan and Georgette hit it off like grapes and Suzette. We had the tickets to the show. It looked like we were headed for a terrific evening. And then, then, it hurts me to even talk about it. Oh, there you are, you bad boys. I was wondering what happened to you. Oh, I will wash the glasses and then we will go, yes? Uh, Michelle, uh, something's come up and I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave now. Oh, that is too bad, yeah. Willie. Make him stay. He's so cute. You talk to him and make him stay, Willie. When you got to go, you got to go. But Brannigan will take my place. He's a very high-class type character, too. What? I am finished now. I turn off the water. Yeah. You are sure you have to go? Yeah, duty calls. Oh. Bye, don't feel bad, honey. <laughs> I'll give you a call one of these days and we get together. Just, just the two of us, huh? <laughs> you see, I, I don't operate so good in crowds. I thought maybe we could, uh, we could take a walk in the bois at twilight. Oh. Day. <laughs> Isn't he cute, really? Get out of here with that bois routine, you crummy chiseler. You gonna tell me what to do, you fall? Oh, boys, 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 please don't fight. I think we can go now. It's getting very late. Okay, turn the water off and we'll go. Yeah, but turn it off. It is broken. Always it goes like that. Drip, drip, drip. Oh, sometimes I think it will make me crazy. Oh, let me take a look at it, sweetie. Maybe I can fix it up for you. Yeah, the professor here can fix anything. He thinks the fact of the matter is the bump can't even fix his necktie without help. Oh, yeah? Give me some tools, sweetie. I want to show this wise guy how it's done. Oh. Oh, it is too late now, Willie. The plumber will fix it on Monday. The tall, sweetie, won't take more than a minute. All right, if you insist. Down this box. I thank you. There. Now, all we got to do is tighten this joint right here under the sink. Then we go to work on the faucet, and before you know it, the job is done. Being... <gasps> Willie, oh, you are so smart. I wouldn't say that exactly. Come here, useless. All this wrench on the pipe the way I got it here. I don't know anything about plumbing. You don't know anything about anything. I just hold it the way I'm telling you, and I'll tighten the other section with the wrench. Yeah, like this? Yeah. That's it, stupid. Just hold it. Uh, now, don't hold... tighten it. Careful, because that coupling's liable to go if you put any pressure on it, and we'll really have a mess. All right, all right. Now hold it. Hold it. Don't tighten it! No, don't, don't stop, you knucklehead! <laughs> I did. I didn't... Willie! Willie, stop it. We will all get Keep drunk. Keep calm, sweetie. Willie, you'll take oh, care Willie. of everything. Yeah, leave it to Willie. Just close this says... cut off valve and stop the water till we get it fixed. There's nothing to get excited about. Uh, oh, boy, this is closing all right. Uh, no, that won't work. But I'll get the door. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? Pardon, monsieur. Okay. It is so good to see you. Come in. Bonjour, mademoiselle. <laughs> I would like to have you meet my friends, Corporal Bert and Corporal Willie. Here is my very dear friend who lives in the apartment below this one. I am very happy to make your acquaintance. Hi, Pierre. Likewise, I'm sure. Monsieur. What can I do for you, Pierre? Monsieur, I would like to talk to you on a matter of very grave importance. Shoot. Sure. To begin with, monsieur, it is raining. <laughs> what do you want me to do about that? <laughs> So it's raining? In the apartment, monsieur. It is raining in the apartment. A storm. And I would appreciate it very much if you would arrange to have it stopped immediately. Yeah, but... Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Just what I needed, another wise guy. Will you do something? Do I'm something? I'm going to have to get this crushed section of pipe out, and then I'm going to have to try and force it over the hook into that elbow joint here. Yeah, that may work. Hey, we're going to have to get a move on, or we'll be late for the show. 
Curtain time is in about 15 minutes. Oh. Hey, what's going on here? Oh, we're having a flood. Oh, those tears, so I forgot, Georgette. I'm so sorry. Oh, that is all right, Michel. We had a very stimulating discussion, Monsieur Brannigan and I. Will it take you long, will he? I'm afraid so, sweetie. This looks like it's going to be a big job. Uh, I don't like to hold up the party, but I don't know. It'll take an hour. More likely two. Looks pretty bad. Oh, that is awful. Yeah, what a shame. Low down, crying shame. Yes, sir. Willie, if I knew the first thing about plumbing, I'd take that wrench away from you and I'd fix it myself. I mean, it ain't nice to spoil a girl's evening this way. Huh? Yeah, I bet you wouldn't a pig's eye. I know what we could do, just so the girls wouldn't be disappointed, Daddy. What are you cooking up now? I was just thinking that even though I got important personal business to attend to, I put it aside and take your place on the party tonight. I'll take Michelle to the show. Oh, so that's the pitch. Oh, isn't this sweet, Willie? Simply adorable. Hey, let's go. We're late already. Oh, I think this is so very nice of you, Bertie. So, Anne Selfish. <laughs> Forget it, honey. <laughs> I just try to make people happy, that's all. Oh. <laughs> so long, Willie, old pal. I'll be seeing you. Yeah, come on, Bye, Willie. Goodbye. I got it fixed. That's the kind of guy I am. I said I'd fix it, and I did. It took me three hours. And the water was up to my knees by the time I got finished. But I fixed it. Now, what are you going to do? I mean, accidents happen. The only thing is, I got a sneaky feeling that was no accident. It'd be different if I didn't tell him. But I told him. I told that moron, don't turn the wrench. Don't turn it. Hold it, I told him. Just like you tell a baby or something. Clear as a bell. I told him to hold it. And then he goes and turns the wrench. Accident. Ha! Some accident. Now, nah, what's the use? Young men, let's talk about your future. And America's future. They're important to each other, you know. And to you. Today, your United States Army is charged with a vital responsibility. Well, you only need to glance at your local newspaper to realize how vital. And to meet this responsibility, the Army is rapidly expanding its forces. They have a job for you. A job that must be done by men of courage. You can get full details of how you may best serve your future and your country's future by a visit to your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Do it today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>